Thanks everyone for joining the Cosmos SDK community call. Um, for this week's agenda, we wanted to give an end of quarter update for Q2, um, just what we were able to accomplish and um, what we're still gonna be working on in the next quarter, give a short Eden update. Um, and then Robert uh, asked about X consensus. So the consensus module was planned for it. We'll dive into that. Uh, there is some like uh, accounts user flow walkthrough um that we can go through and i can give a short explainer about the accounts module and what it will enable um and then we were i wanted to double check if we should skip the th skip the next community call due to awesomeism but it seems like there's already a decent amount of excitement um from talking to people in different chats uh the presentation that will happen on the 13th which is on mobile phone, uh cosmology talk giving a demo of starship so sweet, we can get started. Um, so with uh, Q2, we set out, let me share my screen. Mm -mm -mm. Can everyone see my screen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna yes. Take that, yes, okay. <laughs> um, so as part of all the epics that we wanted to achieve in Q2, we got through a majority of them and there's a few dangling ones out there um, that we're still working on. So some of them, we wanted to uh, migration of the new store module. So the migration of the new store module is its own Go mod using the new IVL. Um, this work was completed and we're currently testing it on the Juno mainnet and seeing uh, amazing results um, in order to uh, yeah, so that's like already out there. Invariant checking, invariant checking. Uh, we closed the issue in favor of moving it into the simulator work. We will also be opening an epic about the circuit breaker v2, um, where the circuit breaker v2 could include some form of invariant checking. Because on the last call, we did find out that there are more users using invariants than we had expected. Um, validate basic. So validate basic was creating the optionality of uh, application application developers to implement validate basic or not. Um, this means that within the messages.go file, you can implement validate basic, or you can just say that we're not going to implement validate basic. Uh, it's just allowed to be implemented against the, on the message server, which is already being done today in many applications. And so it just reduces the amount of lines you want to write. You could add it for extra um, safety, um, but it is not required anymore. Um, we had a large refactor. Uh, so I heard someone unmute. Does anyone have a question? Just please interrupt. I, I was just on the validate basic thing. Um, yeah. Is that to centralize all message validation into the message server so that there's not, it's not in multiple places? Yeah, that, um, yeah that, that's one of the core reasons. It's also like some applications um, wouldn't want to do validate basic uh, beforehand. And it's just like if something in the message is wrong, then the user is just going to have to like pay the transaction fee instead of like having it done before. It also helps a bit with performance just because we were BEC32 encoding, uh, decoding in the anti handler and in the message server. So now you're only decoding it once. Um, so there are like some gotchas around that that will help with performance if people want that performance benefit. Okay. So mm -hmm. I would have a sort of the basic. Sorry, you're cutting out. Oh, oh. I don't know if it's me. Mm. Do you want to have it now? Do you want? It, it is, am, am I cutting out or is Robert cutting out? Robert. Oh, yes. do you want to type your it's message and then I can read it out loud? Um, so one, one question that Robert asked is the new storm module going into V50? Are there already any benchmarks? So the new storm module is going into V50 and we are running it on mainnet um, on, for Juno. Um, uh, uh, later after update. you can ask uh questions on the fly just please uh interrupt as i go through it 
Um, we have done benchmarks of IBL um, itself. Um, the changes have did prove to have a performance benefit. And, and then on mainnet, we're seeing a reduced amount of compaction, which is leading to a reduced amount of IO um, compaction within the go level DB was a, yeah, um, I'll share it uh, right after this call. Um, I'll share it, uh, it's from the IVL repo, um, and I believe it is saved in there. Um, so yeah, the compaction was causing a lot of IO exhaustion um, that we've been, we've been seeing for years, and this refactor heavily reduced, um, heavily reduced the uh, go level DB compaction by close to 80%. And so the compaction is already way better and we're seeing the node um, consume less uh, consume less uh, memory because of it. Um, no, there is actually no migration. Um, it's done in a lazy fashion. And so it's basically start and stop your node with the existing IDL and everything will um, be slowly migrated as it's being used. Yeah, we were we were very scared of like the migration um, because we had a similar one with the fast notes. So we made sure we put uh, John put extra effort to make it in lazy fashion, and we've been testing lazy fashion. Juno went through like one or two upgrades in that period, and we were able to get it tested with upgrades, and it worked um, pretty well, pretty, like flawlessly. Um, so the next thing, um, Matt. Uh, Matt worked on uh, pulling out all the transaction handling uh, items from Auth. So Auth was kind of a uh, beast of doing many things at once. And um, for some reason, transactions were included in there. And so Matt did a great deal of refactoring throughout the entire repo of moving the uh, moving all sign mode handlers to its own Go module, which is x slash tx. Um, the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker will also be released as uh, included in B050. It is its own module, uh, Go module, and so you will be able to import it into your new uh, into your to your applications. And we are working on backporting it to 47 and 46 as well. Um, we spent some time working on IBC requirements for uh, GRPC requirements for IBC relayers. We implemented most of the things that were being asked. We went back and forth, and uh, and so that was able to be closed out. Someone, um, the storage. Um, so we closed this storage epic because we completed some of the IBL refactor, um, and that was part of it. But we will be opening a new epic around storage that will uh, have a itemized list of things to do for the store rewrite that will be happening in the next quarter or that will be beginning in the next quarter. Um, we completed and merged everything related to ABC++. So this is the integration of O38 of Comet. Um, this is the undergoing testing. Skip team is also doing some testing of their own and we're, and we're finding great success. Um, with their test, they found one bug and it was um, fixed and merged. And now we're going through further testing and uh, some internal audits of BASAP. The integration test framework, so the team spent together, kind of the few, few members of the team spent some time uh, building a canonical way of writing integration tests and documented that, and you'll be able to find that in the documentation, and then migrated our integration test to follow this format. The Git signers, so Git signers um, was part of the SDK.message interface. Um, Aaron put in a, Aaron and Matt put in a great deal of effort to refactor to make it uh, automated. So right now, uh, when you have a message service and you have messages that are part of the request, you'll be asked to specify the signer. And by specifying the signer, you don't actually have to specify Git signers in the messages.go any longer, and so it'll be automatically inferred. Um, we're still under, there's a team, there's a few people on the team uh, doing benchmarks on the Git signer, so we make sure that there's no regressions. Validator consensus key rotation, Atish did an amazing job on this. We weren't able to merge it as V50. Um, the release, uh, people wanted the release out sooner, and we didn't have time to do a thorough review of the changes. Um, the, the diff is quite large, so we're holding off for that until the next release in order to give us ample time to do the review. The core API, the core API was fully implemented and released. The only thing open here is documentation. 
And so once we complete documentation, then you'll be able to better understand how to use the core API from everything from Genesis, um, store, uh, services, yeah, events. Marco, yeah. real, real quick on that consensus gate thing, um, the migration work, I guess that doesn't really impact remote signers, does it? Uh, no, no, so I, I mean, that, the, 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 there is no form of like migration here. It's there's only a migration if the operator chooses to rotate the key. Um, so it's just an additional feature. Then yeah, collections. We just shipped, sorry. Uh, we just shipped uh, DKG for trucks where you can uh, have a separate key on each one and it gives you a consensus consensus key. Um, we'd be interested in helping like publish docs on that so anyway as you guys awesome move a little further on that hit me up yeah definitely will definitely will um so uh the next item is collections collections we've migrated all modules other than slashing staking and agree feed grant um there's an issue to potentially improve state storage on governance um but uh, basically all modules except the three that I mentioned are good examples of how to implement collections. There are still a few features landing within the collections API to support things like lazy migration. So kind of like what I was mentioning earlier, we're trying to do more things in a lazy fashion that it is in a stop the world migration. And this would help that if you have a type, um, let's say V1 type and you have a V2 type, you don't have to go and migrate the entire store collections will out of the box in the future handle this lazy migration that you register two types and then it would it, like if you can't get one it'll get the other and vice versa um, and so that's pretty exciting removal of global back 32 so we did a lot of work on removing the um, back 32 address uh, client address user address encoding um, and so at all modules now use a address codec um, the only part, we haven't removed the globals yet, but uh, most modules don't use the globals anymore. That was part of the Git signers here um, work as well. And then uh, the parts that are missing is uh, the validator key back 32 calls and just uh, removing the global, but we didn't want to remove the global right away just because it would be a heavy breaking change on users. Auto CLI and Hubble. Um, so auto CLI is supported, I believe, in um, for queries in about 90% of modules. There's just a few last modules being migrated. Um, and then after that work is uh, completed for queries, then the team will work on, uh, part of the, in the next quarter, we'll work on adding auto CLI keyring so we can do uh, signing and key handling within Hubble. And then you'll be able to do transaction generation and signing um, with Hubble. And, and so everything could be in the future. You don't have to write any form of CLI. It is automatically all inferred based off a single file and heard above. Next, uh, Atish also uh, dove into operator key replacement. So the difference between consensus key and operator key is that the consensus key you're signing the blocks with and the operator key you are um, is the, basically the account that holds the funds to the uh, validator. He did a partial implementation of this, but didn't uh, want to complete it before we completed the consensus key rotation, and so it became a blocked thing based off um, lack of review. Um, prep launch is just, uh, we're trying to create the, um, we created a community repo to create a community-wide discussion board on the Cosmos org instead of individual repos. And so we haven't fully announced that, but we've been working on it to get it ready um, for that and the documentation revamp that we can launch it all at once so people, so we can use this as a form of forum instead of using the Cosmos Hub forum for uh, technology things. We did a large cleanup of uh, intermodal dependencies and this will also continue into the next quarter. So part of this is a lot of, so we cleaned up a lot of intermodule dependencies, but there's still a dependency draft on the SDK. And the end goal of this is first modules become their own Go mods, which will also um, be doing a lot of next quarter and the quarter after that. And, uh, and then if we can get to get modules not to depend on the SDK, then 
modules will kind of be free floating and we won't need to do updates as often to modules um, themselves. So these are a few of our items in the Q2. We completed a bunch. We got partially through a lot. Um, a lot of things just stopped um, at the beginning of June, I would say, just uh, at the beginning to midway of June, just because we wanted to focus on QA and audit for the Eden release. Um, and that leads in me into the next phase. So um, this, so this is the board um, that we have for the Eden release. So we're going through audits of the diffs between 47 and 50. And then we're also going to be running a test net with SDK, like I mentioned before. And so we're uh, a good portion of the way through. Um, a lot of these things have at least one review and they're just waiting for a second reviewer. Um, as part of it, we did a lot of these epics. Um, and so this, so we're aiming for, I mean, the ideal scenario I did mention before is end of June. Of course, we're not going to be able to hit that just because we're, um, and that was like the far-fetched goal. And so we're aiming for mid-July um, as the next goal to get the Eden release out. Of course, we won't release it if we don't have confidence. We'll only release it once we've done enough testing and we do have confidence in the release. Does anyone have questions about the Eden release? The, the Git Signer Sphere work. Um, the, the main thing here that is missing is we want to document the new Git Signers functionality and we want to optimize uh, any repeated calls to proto on Marshall and Git Signers and the anti handlers so we're just not duplicating computation. No questions? That's awesome. I go to 050 end of July. Uh, I mean, the, the goal is like uh, midway through July, but if uh, it could potentially be pushed to the end of July. And um, we, we do want to get it out uh, sooner than later because it un unlocks us to be able to work on our Q3 goals, um, which a large part is the storage rewrite and the uh, runtime module work. Um, and we were just discussing that in the team call, and everyone's very excited about that. So we, we do want to get it out to be able to unlock the next work scopes, um, but we won't, we won't just push it out, just to push it out. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, Robert, you asked about the X consensus module and a short explanation about it. Um, did you have specific, oh, I see some. Oh, uh, so Robert, uh, the migration there you were talking about um, in your comment, you know, you say I was even commenting that there could be an uh, option for immediate migration or lazy. Um, that is with uh, uh, BEC32 encoding in state. And so there are a few areas that BEC32 encoding kind of bleeds into state. And so we want to clean that up. So if a user um, decides not to use BEC32 and use something else, that it doesn't prevent them um, from doing it or it doesn't add an extra encoding step at that layer. And so, um, yeah, we should be able to do it either optional or immediate. Um, the author of collections would probably um, be better to, you left the comment there, and so at least we know that uh, there are teams who are willing to take the um, potential downtime of doing an immediate migration. Um, but uh, for the consensus explanation, did you have something specific that you wanted to talk about, Robert? Yeah, like uh, in general, a bit more intro about it. Uh, why do we need it through like an app over there? And yeah, uh, yeah. that's like for V50 or it's even for later? Um, so. I want to say it's even for 47. I would have to double check the numbers. Um, but the idea behind consensus is before we had a parameters module where all modules stored parameters in. And so with the deprecation of parameters and all modules handling their own parameters, um, there were a couple parameters left to the winds, specific, specifically those related to comments um, or the consensus engine. And so this is why we introduced the X size mm -hmm. consensus module because it handles uh, comic consensus uh, consensus related parameters um, 
that would need to or potentially be uh, able to be modified by governance. Um, so it is required um, when you start the chain because uh, otherwise there's no way for Comet to get the updated uh, consensus parameters it needs to the chain. Oh, so it's like the, um, what's the name of it? Like the, the distribution parameters, which like, you know, specify the block time, this kind of things? Uh, it would be like a block gas, block max, max gas, max bytes. Um, in, in B50, it would be when you want to enable load extensions. So load extensions, you don't want to start right after the upgrade. You want to mm. maybe like wait a block or two for it to start because the reason is like when you upgrade, the last block doesn't have load extensions. And if you start it right after the upgrade, then the state machine is going to be looking for both. Uh, the state machine and the consensus engine are looking for both extensions from the last block, but they're non-existent. And so you have to kind of start it in the next, uh, in the block, like upgrade plus one or whatever teams want, upgrade plus X. Yeah, I mean, okay. So in fact, like for that general parameters, uh, I had the same need and I created, Adumi, I created a YouGov module exactly for for the same thing like you know max gas or something which is then used in anti-handlers or uh like let me know i can like contribute some of it back i'm just sharing a link here yeah um i'll take a gander at it um after this call and then i can get back to you on uh, how they overlap or if they overlap Oh, it's fucking Mingas. Yeah, but the general idea here is that extending the you know Gov capability without polluting the Gov namespace, because Gov yeah. like you know, um, like we cannot. I mean, we would need to fork it if you would like to exchange Gov, uh, sort of extend Gov. You you would need to fork uh, consensus. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, like the probably the idea here is, you know, how to make it extendable. So if we um, move it to the SDK, to the core, it must be extendable, right? Because Gov today is not extendable. Like, you know, I cannot add a new parameter to the Gov. And yeah, the way yeah. I would need to do it, I would need to fork it. I don't want to do it, right? So if you do like, you know, more uh, universal, um, let's say cross module, um, uh, kind of, let's say, uh, consensus config, right? It m must be somehow, uh, um, in a way, universal that anyone can add like a new parameter there. So, so I do think we do. We are talking about two different things right now. Um, consensus actually only handles uh, these parameters from Comet. Um, it, it, it does. It's not meant to be like extendable to like add different parameters. Um, mm. It's basically like uh, what are the max bytes allowed in a, in, a, in a block? What is the max gas? Um, what is like your uh, max uh, age, max age of evidence in blocks? So this would be kind of like your unbonding period. So we, it's like technically we should be merging. I think we do right now. We merge the unbonding period with the evidence, with the age of evidence. Um, and then what's the max size of evidence? Um, what is the validator pub key type that can be used um, the version params is used via um, version params is used mm -hmm. for upgrades, and then the the new one added the ABCI params for the vote extensions enable height. Uh, right. Okay. So today this is. I mean, correct me if you can. Today this is um, in setting the validator config, right? No, uh, so the, these are set today also on chain. It just before they were handled by the params module. Hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, but I'll also look through your YouGov, and maybe there is a way that like we can provide a module that like people can easily extend different types of parameters without needing to like um, conflate it with different namespaces. Awesome, awesome. So, um, so kind of to update everyone. So we've been working the past uh, couple months on what we call uh, the accounts module. 
Um, and just to give a short overview, the accounts module is meant to be a way for application developers to write their own account types on top of the existing base account. And so uh, we, we would have the base account, but you'd also have these different account types like for session keys or key rotation. And then we would like uh, get an on-chain multi-sig, so you don't have to do this like off-chain that stuff that we're doing now and different types of accounts that uh, people would want within their own chain, different types of vesting accounts. Um, and the idea is that you don't have to fork the vesting module or you don't have to fork the um, SDK in order to add it. So it's like, it is this like plugin interface. Um, and so, but the, the catch here is the owner of the account is set as a public private key. It doesn't have to be the same address. So there, there's like a few different uh, uh, user flows here. So the first user flow is basically the user has um, an account, an auth based account, so base account, and it wants to create additional accounts, but not the old fashioned way of like different private keys or different HD paths. It just wants to have the account um, and the signer be the, pre the same account that it had that it has right now. So it's kind of extending the functionality of your current account, but it's not migrating your current account to an account, uh, to, to an account of accounts. Um, I'm saying account a lot. And then the, the second flow is that a user um, wants to migrate their auth account, so their base account, into uh, an account derived from the accounts module because there's maybe some added functionality or they want to be able to change the signers. So there is a... Um, large thing in Cosmos, like there's a lot of airdrops. And so there's everyone probably has like 20, 30 accounts. And because of that, um, they have potentially many different private keys. And so the user may want to migrate some of their existing accounts to have a single private key, um, but and maybe they didn't use the HD path um, flow to create the new accounts. And so they updated, upgrade all the signers. Um, I can, there we have an RFC. Um, so let me share this doc. So this doc kind of goes to the user flows because the one gotcha, I will say, um, dun, dun, dun. the one gotcha with uh, creating accounts or something that is not derived from the, the public key right now is with Kepler and Osmosis and many of these things, the, when, with many of these applications, they kind of infer where you want to send the funds to. So on Osmosis, when you say deposit or withdraw, right away it kind of inf it just infers that like, hey, you probably want to send it to the Cosmos Hub account um, that you're, you're withdrawing to Cosmos Hub. You just want to send it, they want to back 32 decode and encode into Cosmos Hub's um, back 32, and then they just send it there. But in this case, there is the there is the issue that um, users will probably will most likely need to set the destination address instead of just um, the application or the UI just inferring it. And so it is a bit a step back in one aspect of the UX. But we also don't see the average uh, user um, using uh, potentially using accounts. We kind of see it as more of like a prosumer thing for people to build functionality or businesses with certain account types on chains. And that would be abstracted within their own front ends. Um, and so we're talking with wallets um, about this, but also just wanted to touch base if um, people have different solutions in mind for potentially um, alternatives to how to do uh, interchain communication in this sense. Um, or, and then, also, the, the other thing is we won't be doing uh, implicit account creation. So in the current accounts design, we have an implicit uh, account creation model where it's like if you send funds to an account and it doesn't exist, we have this anti-handler set pub key function, set pub key decorator that will set the pub key as the, as the, owner, of the, as the owner of the address. And in the future, um, uh, with accounts, at least, we are thinking of moving more towards an explicit model or an optionality between the two by de and defaulted to um, explicit because uh, at least today, uh, Nick Nicholas from Osmosis suggested using IBC hooks in order to like create the account on the fly if you are sending like the the new owner of the account. Um, 
but just wanted to get a, a gauge here of if people think that is like sufficient or if people have like potentially different solutions that they'd want to do, just kind of get a feel for it as we are begin implementing it, that it is what people are envisioning. Or people just have questions right now because I just talked a lot. Nada. Okay. Um, we will be we will be continuing with the with wallets to see if that UX is fine with them. Um, just that if a user is, is transferring from an account account um, from an account derived from accounts from the new accounts module, it will they will have to specify the destination address on the counterparty chain, and it won't be able to be inferred. Um, it's a it's a minor step back in UX because we can't do it all automatically. But I think I'm at least from my end, I'm not sure if there's any other solution. Um, maybe Jack or Justin, you, know, you guys have experience with IBC and IBC apps, um, so you guys might have a, a better solution in mind. I was having trouble following the exact problem. Do you mind restating it? It's basically that it, you can't um, you can't derive the destination address from an account derived from the accounts module. You can only you can only spe you can only infer the destination address via the base account, that, like how we do now. I think that this practice <clears throat> of assuming that the account is the same on all the chains is potentially an anti-pattern, forcing a break with that, not necessarily the worst thing. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to retain that property, then we should have a longer conversation about just retaining that property. I wrote a um, little piece of middleware yesterday to expose staking. So like, you could send tokens over IBC and then they would just get immediately staked. And to avoid allowing other users to stake on your behalf, I use that property of accounts. Like, i.e., we'll just say, like, only Cosmos people can do this. And, um, you know, we'll just check that your pub key is the same on both chains. I think that the ETH addresses work this way. And there's a lot of like assumptions baked into this. I feel slightly ambivalent about that, I guess. It's kind of like that's I a mean, non example answer. And then the main example I have in my head is uh, the like optimism um, winter mute issue where it's like they just like winter mute just like sent their um, address from uh, the ETH for their Gnosis safe and then like someone claimed it on optimism and like claimed all of the funds. And it's just like, this is kind of an example of like, okay, if it's like a Gnosis safe address, if you're sending funds to it, um, it should be rejected or you should be like, you, it would like require to set who the owner is of that address and the message in order to avoid what happened with them. Do you remember, you know what I'm talking about, Jack? Yeah, it's, I mean, it is like, it is a UX problem. I think yeah. that the only real solve for this is like name, uh, like interchain naming systems. Yeah. And it becomes like a registry where it's like you say, like, on Marco.cosmos, here is my osmosis address, here's my like, um, yeah. address, here's okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the, I mean, I can't think of another solve for that. Yeah. You know, doing it this way essentially rips the Band-Aid off and says, okay. hey, this crutch that you guys are using to try to identify users across multiple chains is bad. Um, you know, I think that like from the beginning in crypto, Satoshi was like, you need a lot of different accounts in order to retain any sort of pseudonymity. <clears throat> but I think that we've seen a chain analysis, like all of these things are basically transparent. So we've kind of swung the other way where it's like, okay, well, like, why don't I just have the same account everywhere? That's bad too, for reasons, 
but like there's no clear like it has substantial ux benefits in a cross-chain context which i think is tough is there any way to make the initial account id a deterministic output from a public key yeah so um part of the part of the rfc is also that like we could work on deterministic um address uh, or deterministic identifiers for the account I think that that would be like that allows people to optionally continue using the crutch. Mm -hmm. okay, Does anyone else have other thoughts on this? Because I, I think for public chains, it's a desirable property. For private chains, obviously, people aren't going to want it. So mm -hmm. in an IBC context, you're just not going to be able to rely on that. Yeah. It will work to ease UX between certain public chains, but it's not broadly applicable and won't be. And we've got a bunch of different address formats. I think that this sort of coincides with the question of like, should we make ETH addresses in Cosmos a first class citizen? Mm -hmm. And like, if we do that, then yeah but the deterministic address generation i think is a is a nice probably a must-have feature for that i would guess yeah definitely agree um that's definitely an interesting take uh, we didn't approach it like that but it's interesting to hear it anyone else have any thoughts on this not sure how many wallet people are here or non wallet people. Does anyone? If not, then that's also fine. Um, we'll, we'll talk to the wallet since uh, I'll definitely take what you said, Jack, and um, add that to the document. And then that way, uh, when we go talk to the wallets, um, we can see what they think about that because I do think like the, the whole bridge world does create like a complex ux um but i do think it's like eventually like better to do it and like break it and then maybe maybe things get better and there's like a different thing that comes up like your like the dns thing your the name service that you were just talking about i mean yeah like the what i anticipate is <clears throat> I mean, we, it's funny that we're having a name service conversation yesterday in the IBC, mm -hmm. two days ago in the IBC hall. We also had a name service conversation. <laughs> yeah, you, I think the IBC team has finally come around to like, we built something that looks like the internet. You can't a priori know who your peer, peers are from an IBC perspective. So like you need something that looks like DNS. Um, I think that there's good reasons not to have a global registry and each chain will need some chain local data within its state machine. I think that the question of design is whether do we design a single global registry or do we allow each chain to sort of do this and you know jim's here do it in a um pet names format where each chain is kind of keeping their own address book and they're comparing that address book with other chains that are adjacent to them to help fill in gaps um anyway yeah. long story short the chain naming service which is what that is is sort of a different level from the user naming service but i've long thought that each chain would have its own username service on the chain itself on the so you, uh, like every chain has it instead of just one chain this is my guess and the, the chain registry would point towards the authoritative name service for each chain. This is how auth works in practice today. You know, a lot of apps have their own sign-ins. And like, that's akin to having mm -hmm. your own local name service. Some apps delegate sign-in to another chain, i.e. Google. You know, Google provides SSO. Facebook provides SSO. GitHub provides SSO. 
So like there will be some of these like SSO type providers that provide the service to multiple chains and some chains will delegate that. But I think that out of the box, we should support this like sort of mapping on each chain. Um, anyway, that's like, this gets into a much longer conversation. No, it's super useful. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, I definitely remember when that was like the, the hot topic at the moment and it kind of just like withered away. And now it seems like if we did it back then, it <laughs> would have no been easy, easy answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, th there's, there's just no easy answers to it. And yeah. it, it's one of those things where it's like, the question back then was like, who are the users? And it's like, well, we're not going to have the users until we build the thing. This is like kind of a chicken and egg problem. And now everyone's really seeing the need for it. And we're back to the same questions that we were at a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. You know, if it was me and you were like, Jack, what's the roadmap? I'd say build a did module that supports adding names to accounts into every chain and mm -hmm. then engineer whatever chain naming service solution, whether it's pet names or a DNS style system to support referencing other chains, usernames, the mm -hmm. IBC. So anyway, that would be my, yeah. my two cents. Super, super, super interesting. Um, well, if you're watching this recording or if you're on this call right now, there you go, a good idea for what to build. Maybe the Atom Accelerator and the Osmos Grant program may be willing to help fund it too. But awesome. I mean, if that if no one has anything else to add, then we can end the call 10 minutes early. Um, everyone can get start their weekends early or um, just end their day early. If you're in Europe or if you're in the States, just continue with your day, I guess. But uh, awesome, guys. If for those coming to Awesome Awesome in Berlin, I'll see you then and to Adam Berlin. If you're not coming, then maybe I see you in Paris. If you're not coming to that, then see you on the next call. Stoked to see you in Paris. Yes. Um, yes. Does Super somebody sorry. have a couple minutes to, to run me through uh, a couple of links, either Mark or Jillian? I, I, Julian, sorry. Um, I had a Jillian.